Life on Earth is possible because of its natural resources of fresh water, amongst other things such as oxygen, the ozone layer that protects us, and the right distance from the sun. Without water, Earth would be pretty much uninhabitable. Humans are 70% water, and while a person can theoretically go up to three weeks with no food, the average human can only last for three days without water, slowly using the body's water resources until they're drained. And that's how essential water is for us. However, with the ever-growing population, accompanied by the constant explosive expansion of technology and many industries, we have a vastly greater demand for water, especially fresh, on one side and a very limited source of demanded water on the other. Over the last few decades, this has slowly but surely motivated many governments of the so-called developed countries to take steps to first advocate and introduce this issue to the world, and second, to construct applicable strategies that will help with conservation of water and preserving the natural resources for an unimaginable safe future. Yet we overlook the amount of waste that corporations incur by manufacturing and selling us sugared water and other drinks that actually require much more energy than is produced for the final product. The following figures are from the Water Footprint Network's website and reports on the global average water footprint of different foods and the figures uh, that I use here are for gallons of water that are needed to produce a pound of each item of a gallon of each drink. The figures include the water that is used for cultivation, however the figures are still high. So drinking plain old water comes to common sense and I know that many of my climate tired and re recycled tired friends love a glass of wine or a pint of beer. I don't drink wine and I drink very little beer, which is another reason that I roll my eyes when the vegetards start telling me to, um, to stop eating meat. Anyway, 296 gallons to produce one gallon of beer and 872 gallons of water to produce one gallon of wine. I can convert these to litres if you want. Um, so meat is also a culprit with chicken, eight ounces using 330 gallons and hamburger, 616 gallons and steak, 1,232 gallons. And then there are soft drinks which come in at 132 gallons to make a two litre bottle of soda. And once again, these figures are not direct figures. They include the estimated water usage to grow sugar cane and other water dependent functions that are used in the process. However, it still takes a gallon of water to make a two litre bottle of fizzy drink and excessive uh, amounts to produce any of the um, items that I've mentioned previously. So, it's tantamount to being thirsty, but instead of drinking a glass of water, you build a machine that dispenses fizzy flavoured drinks. It requires cleaning, then all the additive, additives are water-based, and followed by processing and distillation where necessary, and flushing, and finally producing a drink that took much more than required just to drink a glass of water. And I can hear you screaming at the back, uh, we want choice, <laughs> it's your right. However, you drink what you're told to, and this is why you drink Coke apart from addiction to sugar. Now, if they've stopped spending hundreds of millions telling you to drink their products, then the chances are that you'd soon stop and likely buy the next best advertised product. These corporations have already fooled enough people into drinking water, and that takes a lot of water to produce in the first instance. It can take up to 1.4 litres of water to produce a litre of water. However, packaging makes a significant footprint. It can take up to three liters of water to make a half liter bottle, and that pushes the cost up straight away. Anyway, what is water conservation and why is it important? Conserving water generally means taking actions, which include both government and their programs and strategies, as well as private companies and ordinary people like us and our efforts towards preserving our natural but limited resources of fresh water. Conserving water is not only important as a strategy to deal with water shortage, it's also crucial for conserving energy and the environment. Water utilities that process the water from its natural source through filters and purifiers to the tap in our homes utilise energy in vast amounts and in some countries this is reportedly measured to be around 15% of the utilisation of their electricity. And we, the humans, are not the only species highly dependent on water. By conserving natural resources, we're preserving the lives and habitats of thousands of different life forms. There are strategies for conserving water. The biggest impact on conserving water in amounts that will make a noticeable difference could be made mainly by large-scale programmes implemented by governments and businesses, and actions taken locally or regionally. One example of this would be government investment in companies that manufacture water-saving technology devices, products for both public facilities, for people's homes and for business. 
for instance, low flow shower heads only allow a little more than two gallons per minute to flow through them, they're a great idea when you consider that a regular shower head flows more than 3.5 gallons of water per minute. And that would mean that if you took a five minute shower with a low flow shower head, you would use 10 gallons, saving you at least seven gallons that you would waste by using a regular shower head. And another example would be um, investing in rainwater harvesting systems that would allow us um, as the name suggests, <laughs> harvest rainwater and find creative ways to reuse it. And this means building canals through cities, constructing ducts that would be able to capture rainwater, investing in filtration systems, amongst other approaches. The harvested rainwater could later be filtered, cleaned and used in agriculture, for gardening, in our homes, for toilets and much, much more. And the fact that wasting water is big business is evident in the US, uh, USA by the fact that it's illegal to harvest rainwater in some states, including Georgia. And what's that all about? However, any government's efforts towards constructing a successful strategy for conserving water would be destined to fail if they don't accompany it with a proper outreach strategy with which they could raise the public's awareness and include them in taking deliberate action towards conserving water and educating people to understand the essential importance of doing so. So, how can you contribute to serving water efforts? Awareness that the problem exists isn't nearly enough to solve the issue. Intentional everyday action by more and more of us, regular folk, combined with governments and businesses locally, nationally and globally, would suffice. These actions include refraining from using water when we don't really need it and avoiding using it in excessive quantity that isn't necessary, wasting it with reckless behaviour, for example, flushing a bug down the toilet when we can use many other methods, or not attending to the water that's leaking from a, you know, like a 40 tap. In an attempt to contribute our part towards conserving water, we can embrace simple approaches in our everyday routines that might not appear to make a bigger difference at first as a single entity, but will be of substantial importance when we do it en masse. Instead of pouring water away from that stale overnight drink you didn't drink, you can use it to water the plants. You can also invest in some water saving products for the home, such as low flow shower heads that I mentioned earlier. You could ensure that when you do make a new purchase of a washing machine or dishwasher, that they have water conserving programs built into them. And another water saver investment you can make is low flush toilets, which are designed to flush at least one litre per flush, less than regular toilets do or automatic taps that minimise the unnecessary flow of water as they automatically turn off when you move your hands from underneath them. And that could save water while you're lathering up. Or you can quit taking those deep, you know, fill to the brim baths. Showering less and for shorter periods also make a difference. And also don't let the water run while you're applying shampoo or lathering, as well as while you're brushing your teeth. And when you shave, you can use a bowl or a jar of water to clean your razor. And it's these simple things that make a difference. And we shouldn't forget that these are luxuries that we gained at a time when we in the UK ruled the world and still do financially. However, we must start being considerate because some of these steps can be applied to the kitchen as well, such as turning the tap off when you're soaping the dishes. Make sure to always uh, use entirely full dishwashers, which not only saves water, but it also saves energy too. You can also put a bowl in the sink to catch up the water that you'd normally waste while waiting for hot water to come out, and then later use that same water to soak dishes, water the plants, or in your own creative ways. I can't think of anything right now, but I'm sure you can. You can also harvest your own rainwater by placing buckets in your garden when it is raining and reuse it later. You can put nozzles on a garden hose to prevent any waste and there are thousands of other ways you can help to conserve water and you don't even need to start doing them all. You only need to begin with one and then you can pat yourself on the back and um, you know, be part of this system. So, we've been told that our freshwater resources are limited, and I'm not totally sure of this, as those that hold the reins of power try to keep us fighting and afraid over scarcity. But that's stuff for another video. All the same, even if we had plenty, what's the point of showering in excess, pun intended, when we can make small changes by using less and giving ourselves that little pat on the back? I'm the OBG. OBG. Mm -hmm.